Oh, beautiful people, welcome once again to our weekly edition of Politics Analysis. But as usual, before I proceed, this is the best time for you to pause the video. Go subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Give the video a thumbs up, which helps to show the video to more people. Activate your notification bell to get notified of any of our new videos. Thank you. Now, let's get My into it. initially is the worry of those who impose their trust in the Tunubu ticket. Who thought that when Tunubu gets into They know office, they were not electing a, mag a magician. You did not tell them you are not No, no, no. They know they are not electing a magician. Your party and nobody promised agenda. Nobody promised Governor magical Shawale. solution. Yeah, your party said you have renewed hope. So let me give you an example of and things no, that have happened. You don't give me an example. I'll I know, give you an example of I what, know what we promised that are happening. More than you who was reporting it. I'm on Whatever the you reported yeah. was, we were the source. Yeah, but the fact we know that... We did not you, promise 24 you, you hours solution. Remember, you remember... We did not promise miracles. Unity schools. We did not promise overnight solution. But nobody said this to be done. Days, and you show me if you have any document that says in 48 hours, this will be done. In 14 days, this will be done. In 21 days, this will be done. Are you saying so that the oaths and the you are the of one, Nigerians? I think you are the one who have the illusion that once a promise is made, automatically once you get into office, uh, either spiritually or by miracles, solutions emerge. The fact we are what Nigeria need is what President Buhari, uh, sorry, President Tinubu. <laughs> What Nigeria needs is what President Buhari, oh no, mm -mm, President Tunubu wants. First of all, oh, these people are so funny. First of all, Tunubu was not elected, uh, let's state that fact, but selected by INEC as instructed by the cabals who believe that Nigeria belongs to them and uh, their birthrights. Um, as narrated by the former uh, governor of uh, Kaduna State, as you all would know, Malam uh, Nasri El Rafai. Nevertheless, you can see that APC has nothing to offer Nigerians. I don't want to jump ahead of myself in this video, so I want to stay in line. So stay with me. Let's listen to the next video. Then I can come back after that to conclude on my opinion about this APC cancer in Nigeria. You see why we keep saying manifestos matter? Absolutely. Uh, we campaign in poetry and governing prose. Now they have seen how hard it is for governance. They are trying to backtrack. But please, somebody should tell Mr. Ashomole that we have receipts. We have the manifesto. It was over 80 page document. Have you noticed so? Yes. How we promised economic growth of 12% and he dialed it back. How we promised agricultural bonds. All the things he promised and he said, we have all the recordings. And no matter how much you try to, you know, move away from it, we'll ask them the question. That's what governance is about. We want him to do well. We want Nigeria to do well. Yes. But Nigeria will only do well with scrutiny, Oji. So please, when politicians start to change mouth, don't listen to them. They promise renewed hope. Although people are facing renewed shaking now, renewed but we know yes, life could be a whole lot better if they do what is needful for the people. President Tinubu himself said, let the poor breathe. Don't suffocate them. But he's suffocating them now with all of this, you know, bad implementation of policies. We they need to go back to the drawing board. Let me now go back to the next, uh, uh, what is it called, video you show. Oji, there's another video I want you to show. Okay. Maybe tomorrow you get the video and show Send it. Send it to me. Uh, in that video, Prince Uduka Obaegbana was the moderator. You know, before this, there was a subsidy debate. And Prince Nduga Obayebana championed that subsidy debate where labor and all the stakeholders came to debates. And I remember Emia Sanusi Lamido was CBN governor then and was giving us the empirical numbers. But people like Mr. Oshomole then were making arguments based on, you know, when you look at it, the arguments and the other people against were making arguments all sorts based on the fact that there was political slant for them and they wanted to enjoy something politically. So you can now see many years down the line, we have gone back to where we are. You know, I'll say this one in Nigeria is almost a cycle. Mm. The best time to have pulled out that sort of thing was 2012. And for everybody now that they cannot talk because of their hypocrisy, at least you heard in that speech that uh, Pastor Tunde Bakari was saying 
They are just there to confuse Christopher Colade. Colade is Christopher Colade. When Good Luck Jonathan announced subsidy removal, he put a plan forward. He brought about Shopee. Christopher Colade was the leader of Shopee. From day one, as he announced, he had a plan. This one's announced subsidy gone, no plan. Just put the plan is to truncate people's life and put them in untold disaster. So you can see that what goes around comes around. You can see all of them. I think the question is, where are all of them today? Yeah. All of them that went to Ojota. Where are all of them today? And guess what? For the man, good luck, Jonathan, it is peace be upon that, that man. Blessings be upon that man. That protest held without any loss of life, except for one incident where an overzealous police officer killed Demola on Yaya Baton. That was the only incident. Military men were there. They shut down the country for two weeks. He never used military to chase or shoot any people to death. You know, we are talking about another incident that happened. How people went to protest and it was scuttled. And they used all sorts to attack them. And people were here, they want to have mass bear of 103 bodies. <laughs> that protest went for over two weeks, Dr. Abati. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Yes, it was. But no life was, the military did not open fire on anybody in Ojota. And they grounded this country for two weeks. All you right. see, life is about good leadership. Right. If you see a good leader, I have not met President Goodluck Jonathan, but please, if you're watching this, sir, your word speaks for you. Your right. act is speaking for you. And it's vindicating you today. Yeah, and let's learn to tell the truth. That's really what we need I have here, not I met know. President Goodluck I Absolutely. don't know him, but I'm saying this to him. To Recall honor him today. that in 2012, the then President Goodluck Jonathan had removed subsidy and introduced Shopee as a relief package to cushion the effects that the removal would have on the citizens of Nigeria. At the time, with the subsidy removed, PMS will still have been under 150 naira. But these same APC politicians, mainly in the southwest, gathered all the men and women of God and all those who know who in that part of the country, including the renowned Nobel laureate, Wale Soinka, Femi Falano, the renowned SAN, and his likes. They all gathered in Ojota in Lagos for about two weeks. They shut down economic activities, and the president then did not unleash the military on them like the same APC did during the NSAS of October 2020. APC, due to the protest, stopped Jonathan from removing subsidy at the best time that it should have been removed. The country, the president duly retracted on the said subsidy removal and Nigeria then lost the best opportunity with which they would have removed the cancer called subsidy. To use the words of Peter B, the Labour Party presidential candidate, that this oil subsidy is an organized crime by politicians and their cronies. APC used that strategy and protest to discredit the then president, good luck, Jonathan, and deceive Nigerians by discrediting the president. Recall that then finance minister, Ms. Okonjo Iwala, had also insisted on this policy and did not pay those involved in this oil subsidy crime. And what did they do? They kidnapped her 80-year-old mother for some time. And that was how the then oil subsidy removal did not go ahead under the watch of Jonathan. Fast forward to 2015, the APC came into power. Recall that Jonathan described them as wicked and bitter people who have nothing good to offer to Nigerians. Nigerians can now attest to that assertion after eight years of APC under Buhari and a couple of months of Tinubu renewed Shege. Today, in 2023, APC have removed the same oil subsidy as alleged because there is no more money to pay for it. And they have done that without any meaningful caution put in place to cushion the impact on the citizens. And the PMS is now selling at a rate that is more than five times higher than what it would have been in 2012. And you ask, 
Where are all those pastors and intellectuals that were on the streets of Lagos protesting then when fuel was meant to be less than 150 naira even after the oil subsidy remover? Now that it is over 700 naira and they are quiet, <laughs> where is Wale Shoinka? The man who is currently describing the obedience, Nigerians who have chosen to take the country back, he described them as fascist. Where is he? Instead of being on the street leading protest against government, he is busy naming the youths that are fighting for their future fascists. That goes to show you the old people who need to respect from the young people, this is where they are today. They've all gone silent. To end this video, it is important to know that APC is a cancer that is out to destroy the country for the selfish interest of the politicians that are currently occupying the position of power. If the citizens don't do anything about it, these politicians would completely destroy the future of young people in Nigeria. So APC is a cancer. All well-meaning Nigerians must harmonize to get rid of them. Their criminal activities are right now before the court and all eyes are on the judiciary to do the needful. Otherwise, Nigeria would slide into anarchy without future. Thanks for watching, guys. Come to the end of this edition of Politics Analysis. Hope you did enjoy the video. Once more, kindly subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also activate your notification bell to get notified of our new videos. Also, if you have a suggestion of videos that you'd like us to talk about and analyze, feel free to make your suggestion on the comment section and we could take your advice. Thanks for watching. Until the next edition, from me, from here, it's goodbye.